So I'm going to change the tune a little bit um, from what we've been... This is my new book, my third book. It's called Root Work. And it's, um, it's primarily uh, um, persona poems in the voice of uh, John Brown, the abolitionist. Amen? Okay. And, but, and his wife. Mary Day Brown. I did two years of research before I started writing the book. So I'm just going to assume that you sort of know that history a little bit. And I'm going to do something I hadn't done before in, a, in the way the book is written um, backwards in time. The two things that John Brown are known for is the bloody Kansas, the battle over whether there'll be, there would be slavery in Kansas and in the West. Um, and Harper's Ferry, where he um, went in 1859 with a band of brothers and to liberate the arms to give to the enslaved people of Virginia. And it failed in some ways, and he was caught, and he was hung. Um, and I admire both of them very much, along with so many other figures. So. But I thought I'd just start with this because there's so much music here tonight. I'm not going to sing, but this is um, a slave canticle. Just before day, I feel them. Just before day, I feel them. My sister, I feel them. My sister, I feel them. All night long, I've been feeling them. Just before day, I feel them. Just before day, I feel them, the spirit, I feel them, the spirit, I feel them. So um, I'd like to start with the grief of Mary. This is a, a poem that, so the book goes backward in time, um, and uh, then at the last, like s section six, it leaps forward, so I'm going to just tell you the dates. Um, the book is also has um, ghosts and uh, runaways, the poems from them interspersed. And these are, these are the lost writings of John Brown and Mary Day Brown. Lucretia Mott um, was a, um, a white abolitionist, wealthy abolitionist, and uh, women's right um, advocate. From the Lost Mo Notebook, Mary Day Brown, Pennsylvania, December 1st, 1859, awaiting the hanging of my husband, John Brown. In the home of Lucretia Mott, there are many mirrors. I have not before today seen myself so reflected. Each room is full of daylight, harsh, merciless, jagged this light is to me, my face so bleak, so sore, so. My hard mouth, my stern hair, the black of the dress I wear, how plain I am made, how plain to go through on my way to. These teacups and their tiny plates beneath them are so fragile. I do not understand the windows, the rugs, the mirrors everywhere, these tiny cups. Oh, my husband, my dearest honor. So, um, so, um, John Brown and his sons went to Kansas twice. And the second time, um, and all of this is factual, but the poems are mine and the voices I heard are mine. So, so he's asked to come back. I have it in the notes, you can read that. He's asked to come back. And so I imagine he wrote this letter to Mary Day Brown. <clears throat> From the Lost Letters, John Brown to Mary Day Brown. Ohio, September 16th, 1857. My dearest wife, I have answered as best I can to our friend in Kansas. 
I know this life I've given you is hard, very hard. There are some things a man has the courage only once to say. The hour must be right in urgency enough to overcome his natural decorum. You were young when first we found ourselves together. I was in need, as you guessed, of a mother for my brood and strong helpmate to the farm. You were all that, it is true. Sixteen, you were hardened to work and toil, and I a man twice your age. I have come of late to think on that. I never asked, never thought to inquire what great desire you might have secreted within yourself, what tender place you might have hid from others, from myself. Of the great task we set ourselves, and in this I ask your steadfast honor to our just and merciful cause, I must, as God wills, place myself at the head and again away from you and the children. Kansas is the knife point. Shall we be a free state, or shall we continue the sin of slavery? There are men yet in Kansas who are not confirmed against the soul killers, those who thieve human flesh. I think of what we have seen, those bodies you have tended, men's backs torn and ripped from the whip, an ear sliced, tongues cut out, and worse, I fear, for those women whom you, so gentle, lead into the barn to tend. Mary, this is the battle, one for which I am called. There are moments when vision is so clear as if through time itself, half dream, half sight. I hesitate to say what I see, so dire it seems the land in blight, the people stunned. What shall I do then but fight? Oh Mary, I mean to tell you this. Truly my heart is split as wood cleaved by axe. When at night we spread our blankets before the kitchen's fire, you in white nightgown, your hair falling down and down, and together we make our peace and the children who come from it, I am filled with what I think is joy. At least, I believe it so. I've never leaned towards love. I've never sought it out. All has been given to living and to this cause. But there is this inexpressible, this privacy to you, a place you go when, for a moment, your labors are done. I have seen you stand as still as a deer listening for gunshot. I would tell you, Mary, before I depart and enter Kansas once more, where all may be called into question. I have seen you, your husband, John Brown. back in time and um, um what oh, okay so i i want to read another one i um in her voice they were very very poor and um uh he was you know all over the country raising money to um help um escape um help um the enslaved people escape escape to canada and um elbow new york where they lived was one of the last, um, the last stops on the Underground Railroad. Uh, Frances Harper was a Afri free black woman who um, was a, a well known all across the country. Actually, a poet, a writer, um, an activist, a speech maker, and an abolitionist. And she knew John Brown and she knew Mary Day Brown. So this is a, um, an epistolary poem. From the lost letter, Mary Day Brown to Francis Harper. Elba, New York, winter, 1850. Dear Mrs. Harper, thank you for your dollar. We were at our last loaf. It is so cold. 
the ground is iron, and I must ask favor of the men to axe the wood. In your letter, you inquire as to what I believe. You are the first to ask. I hear those of good heart, and I believe they are. Tell us beneath our skin we are but the same. It may be polite of Mr. Garrison to say it so. I do not know. In this cause, I have become harsh. The same? How could that be? The slavers win their fugitive law while we hide those who flee its mandate. Before my meager fire runaways show me their scars. A hundred miles and more they walk in cold and in heat. I have seen a man's toes gone from frostbite, and yet he walked. They will go to freedom whatever the cost. Who would deny this? What we bear, what we have known, that makes us, does it not? I wish for myself to carry a black heart, to see as those who bear this slavery do, not out of pity, but trust. I believe they see this country true. Yours, Mary Day Brown. Um, so, um, Mary Day Brown, John Brown, Mary Day Brown was John Brown's second wife, and she was 16 um, when he um, asked her to marry him. And he already had five kids, and she had 13 with him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Quite a woman, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. But this is when she, um, she's just newly married. <laughs> From the Lost Notebook of Mary Day Brown, August 1833. Each evening, he schools me after supper is done, before the lamp burns low. We have the slate and coal to mark the lines, and together we copy the words of God. We print each letter careful. Thou shalt not deliver unto his master the servant which is escaped from his master unto thee. He shall dwell with thee even among you. I am newly married, and in this learning, I feel a liking. Words open up as if I have washed my face after a long day of hard work. This, even more than what comes later, brings to me respect of John Brown. A ghost poem. I can find it. Um, okay. So I think I can fit two of these in that one. Okay. Runaway. This is in a voice of a runaway, a ghost runaway. Whites they like when we trouble their speech, slur our words, confuse their meaning, they mistake us. Our eyes always cast down, and it is needful we do so. Cast down our eyes, for even the soft Mesa know they would not like what they see if they did see us. They call us thief if we runs away, tell us Bible, say it so. Well, I dug my hands into that Bama mud to try and scrape some of that good, dark earth home. Save my cowrie shell, my bit of blue cloth, my baby's cry inside my head. I would have stole her hair, eyes, her hands if I could. But I guess I only stole myself. Don't look at me, Miss Mary. Don't look, even you. May I end?